It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. You can find me at Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting if you just email me directly at oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com. Now, down in Florida, there's this incredibly tragic story of this little girl, Madeline Sota. First she went missing, then she was found dead. Uh, They've arrested her mother's boyfriend for sexual battery and possession of child pornography, but not for the death of this kid yet. Um, And there's a woman on TikTok and Instagram, YouTube. She's called uh, the Salty Lunatic. Her name is Shauna. And she does tattooing and stuff. And she's on TikTok and, and Reels like every five minutes with a new update on this case. As a matter of fact, that's how I heard about this case initially because it wasn't even the news yet. Uh, so, Shauna from the Salty Lunatics, are you there? I'm here. Hey, before we get into the, the whole story about Madeline Stolter, tell us about yourself. Who is uh, Shauna? So, I'm a, you know, I started out, I'm a dental assistant, and then this was years ago, and then I was a financial advisor and a realtor, and then I became an entrepreneur, and we started uh, several businesses. We have a tattoo shop, we have a laser business with four diode lasers, and a landscaping business. Uh, Also have done cosmetology and hair in the past, so, you know, just keeping it busy. Yeah, we were just uh, joking about that off the air. You had uh, so many different projects going on all at once. Tattooing, right? And they can find all this stuff at the thesaltylunatics.com, right? Yes, thesaltylunatics.com will have my uh, portfolio, all of my artwork. Now, I've been watching you, and, and I heard I first heard about the Madeline Sota case through your uh, TikToks. Um, have you always been uh, one of these people that's fascinated by true crime and these kind of things? Um, to be honest, no, I actually, um, I started out on TikTok like most people in 2020, um, I was out of work and I was sitting at home playing on TikTok. I have had over 85 accounts. Uh, my highest, I had 125,000 followers over on Clapper until I got permanently banned off of Clapper for going to the Donald Trump, um, rally on January 6th. So they completely banned us from the app, uh, me and a couple of my friends for going to that rally. Um, so then I went back to TikTok. I've since had several accounts. I often talk about um, things that the media doesn't want to talk about. That's uh, a lot of time what I end up finding. I, I, I'm very, it, it upsets me when I find out things and the media doesn't want to talk about it. And then it just makes me want to talk about it more. And it's just some sort of drive in me that says, you know what? They're not talking about that. So I'm going to talk about it. So I find all the things out there that I can find evidence on. That the, that the media is like, no, we're going to ignore that. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I feel your pain there. <laughs> okay, that's how, I, that's how I got started in radio 10 years ago, um, trying to expose some light on some stories that I had firsthand knowledge of. Um, and But then only to now just be so disappointed because even people in, in the so-called alternative media, I find, are also carrying water for certain forces out there. But what are you going to do, you know, and just try and chug along? At least you seem to be having fun at it, you know, with the, the salty lunatics on a TikTok. Yeah, yeah, I started out as Little County Girl, and I was Little County Girl for a really long time. And then, you know, a lot of people, you know, harassing me and stuff, because, again, I'm talking about the things the media don't want to talk about. You know, so when you do that, you end up getting a lot of a lot of haters. And uh, and so I finally just owned it and was like, you guys going to call me crazy. Then I'm going to go ahead and just own the the thing. And I turned it into a enterprise of businesses. (laughs) And now we are the Salty Lunatics and we have several businesses under that name. And it's just my way of just laughing at the trolls, you know. But this is your first true crime uh, fascination. This is uh, this is in my backyard. So yeah, this is my first like uh, true crime investigation type thing. Yeah, I just it's it's in my city. It's you know I don't want this shit in my backyard. Right. You know, it's kind of funny uh, because hey, you talk about you're all upset about these trolls and stuff like that, and then in true crime is like what's notorious for the worst <laughs> trolls and obsessive uh, listeners out there. So you're kind of like a jumping out of the fire into the fire you know (laughs) you know what though i've gotten nothing but support there's only been a really a few people that have thrown hate and shade my way and i really uh, they're sus (laughs) (laughs) they're they're still accounting on the name no you know whatever 
Okay, well, we've been laughing, okay, but uh, this is really, you know, my God. And like you said, this is close to home for both of us. I just moved to Florida myself. And this young kid, Madeline Soto, on basically her 13th birthday. Uh, how did you first hear about this story? And, and why don't you give us a little background on who was Madeline Soto? Okay, so I was on Facebook and just scrolling through doing my thing, and a friend of mine posted, you know, my friend's child is missing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, of course, you see that, and it's like, oh, my God, you know, let me share. And I thought it was my friend's friend. So, I'm, you know, I'm sharing, and I'm sharing everywhere and talking about it, you know, on all my social media. It's like I always do whenever there's a missing child, like I hope all people do. Right. And um, and and then – I was fine. Start finding out more about the case. Like they start talking about how, you know, Stefan Stearns was arrested. And then I, of course, went back to my friend and I was like, oh, my God, like your friends, you know, whatever. And she's like, oh, I didn't know it. I, I know the person. I just shared the post. So it turns out she didn't even know. She just shared a post. And it was like a friend of a friend of a friend, I guess. So anyways, it wasn't somebody that I actually knew. But at this point, I was vested in the case. I was like, well, this is something that's happening at Disney. Both the parents work at Disney. I grew up going to Disney. I have kids of my own that, you know, this is just, this is in my backyard. And this is children. And, you know, I've got friends that have young kids that are going to Disney all the time. So I just want to know what's going on. So what was the official story that the the guardians or the parents first told police? So the... The story was was that they took Madeline to the church. They dropped they dropped her off. So it was, and this was the big lie that everyone caught Jennifer, the mom, in was that she said we went to the church, we dropped her off, and that was the last time we saw her. And then she goes, "Oh wait, I wasn't there." And she's like, "I I, I stayed home." And everyone was like, "Oh, the mom's lying." Mm-hmm. You know, that's a big lie. Like, why the mom lie? Um, and then it came out that Stefan Stearns and the photographs and, and everything that was found with him. And a couple of days later, uh, it was found that, um, I think that's that when Stephen they, they found the, her body, right? No, yeah, I think they found the pornography on his phone first. Yeah, they definitely did. They yeah. found all this stuff on his phone. I don't even want to say the word. I don't even want to think about what yeah. what he did to her and what was on that phone. It's very hard for me to, to to phrase that and think about that. Sorry. Now, what was the what was the relationship between Stephen Stern and the mother? That's a good question. So Stephen Stearns is a boyfriend of the mother. Okay, and this goes this goes really deep. So I went down a rabbit hole. So. When I found out about Stephen Stearns, he went and basically took Madeline's body over to where her memorial is. And if you look at the map where the memorial is and from where Stephen Stearns is, the memorial is quite a distance from his house. So he took the body. They found the body. They found all this stuff on his on his phone. He was arrested for all. I mean, the things that he did to his child were beyond. I mean, you're talking years of abuse. He took pictures. He was uploading pictures to his phone. And, and he had a Reddit account, and he had, you know, he was interested in Tamagotchi. He was very, very into Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi, you can go online, and you have this little toy. It's like a toy pet that you wear on your on your hip. And when you go walk around the neighborhood, you can see what other kids in the neighborhood also have a Tamagotchi toy. And you can contact them through your Tamagotchi toy, and you guys can play in a little Tamagotchi land. And it's very disturbing to think that this grown man has this Tamagotchi toy. And it's potentially walking around neighborhoods looking for other children. Now, he talked about um, things on Reddit with other kids. He had this, this thing where he was, like, um, sussing it on Reddit. That was his name. And he was on this platform talking to teenagers and kids. So this was something that he was into. The things that he had on his phone, victims, uh, not just Maddie. There were other victims. So this is highly suspicious. Now, three days after Stephen Stearns is arrested... There's a guy right down the street by the names of James Cox who's arrested. Okay. So James Cox gets arrested. Him and his son together are making child pornography. Mm. So they're making it inside the house. The cops have arrested them for, I mean, they had 15 phones that they believed was Henry's and several servers uh, that they collected from the house. I mean, you're talking plethora of CP that they were making in that house. So Henry... The son, he works for DCF, okay? He commits suicide during the raid, all right? So what the media isn't telling you, and they're not going to tell you, is that 
the other son, there's another son. Now, he wasn't at the house that we know of, but I don't know, you know, when or if or how often he goes to the house. We found his social media. And on his social media, him and the brother and the dad, they're very close. I mean, they go to ball games together. They hang out together all the time. And he had uh, somebody come out to me, had sent me a message, said that they used to work for the other brother at the Department of Corrections because the other brother was her supervisor. He's the warden of the Department of Corrections of Okeechobee. So the brother's the warden. Then I come to find out that, well, actually, I found out first before I even found out who the brother was. I found out because somebody on Facebook says, Maura Cox O'Toole is James' daughter-in-law. She was the principal of the St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic School up the road and had Santa working there and the children sitting on his lap and then showed a picture of him with a child on his lap from the school. And then another person commented to me when I brought it up in the Madeline Soto discussion face group. She commented on my thing. It was a friend of mine, and she lived in the area, and she said, this is so disturbing. The school has not even notified me, and I am finding this out through Facebook. I have a child who goes to that school. I remember this man. I remember the principal. I remember Maura very, very, <coughs> sorry, very, very well, <coughs> and um, and my child was sit- I, I have pictures of my child sitting on this man's lap. Now, if you listen to the media, they're like, oh, they have pictures that they found in the house of Santa taking pictures in a public bathroom of other children, but they're claiming they may never know where that bathroom was. Oh, wow. they'll, they'll never know where that bathroom was. And they're not talking about Jerome, who's the warden of the corrections department of of, you know, uh, Okeechobee. And they're not talking about the daughter-in-law who is the principal of the St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic School for 20 years. So that's highly fishy to me. And then we got the fact that Stephen Stearns literally disposed, like tried to dispose of Madeline's body 10 minutes away from James Cox's house. So in my mind, I'm going, these two cases are connected. I'm like, these two cases are connected. There's no way these two cases are not connected. There's something bigger going on. This case is bigger than we think. So this is the first time when I'm like, okay, this case is bigger than we think. So then, out of the blue, this guy comes out, and he goes on this show called um, Gray Hughes. And so Gray Hughes has this show, and this guy comes on. His name is David Solomon. Now, David Solomon says that he knows Stephen Stearns and that Stephen Stearns is part of a trafficking ring that trafficked him in 2012. And he escaped from this trafficking ring, and he has been on the run ever since. And he starts name-dropping. He's like, there's his friends. His friends are Brian. His, and he's like, his friend's Brian Davis. His friend's James Artville. His friend's with Eric Reinhold. He's friends with, and he starts naming all these people. So I'm like, of course, I'm jotting it down, right? I'm like, who are these people? Because these people live in my neighborhood. Like, <laughs> I want to know. So, um, so of course, I look into these people. So, David, Brian Davis, and you can if you take 10 minutes. Don't even have to take 10 minutes of your time because it's a 10-minute video. You're going to skip through to the five-minute mark, okay? Don't watch the first half. You're going to be confused. The video is old. It's of Brian Davis, okay? It's him from 2015. He is a book writer. He is a children's book writer. Now, he has written a plethora of children's books. He's very big in the children's book writing world probably worked at Disney. His friend James is an illustrator, a brilliant illustrator, great artist, probably worked at Disney. Um, Do you see the connection here? Like everybody's working in the entertainment of children's field here. So we have Brian Davis does this video and he's on this talk show. Now we're talking 15 years, you know, 2015. So the, the guy's like, so how do you write your books? Where do you get your ideas from? Right. This is the host of the show. And he's talking to Brian Davis. He's like, where do you get your ideas from? And Brian Davis is like, well, you know, I use the church and I have like seven kids and I talk to my kids and I had this dream about a fire breathing dragon. And then I started writing books about dragons and all my books are about dragons. And the host is like, oh, and he's like, and, and, you know, you reach out to other people besides your kids, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, I use the church and talk to all these kids at church and I go to the school. And he goes, and you have a website too, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, I have a website 
where all these kids come and we all talk about these these books and like different things and they can put their input on the books and you know what they think of the books and and I talk to these children privately and we talk about you know private we I have private messages with hundreds and thousands he said I think he said millions of kids mm-hmm. uh, use this messaging platform okay and he has thousands of conversations with these children and he's like and we talk about things like pornography and cutting and he said it like so casually and I was like what this fuck this old man is having grown conversations with children okay on his so I'm of course I check out this website and I go log in I mean you can go on his Wikipedia and down at the bottom of the Wikipedia you see like how he's he's created this whole website thing like it's huge and you can go on there and you can create a whole account and you can see where you can go private message them it's still up and about this is from 2015 this guy has been around and frequently he travels around the country doing book signings and doing and going to different churches okay, okay? but wait but so what's his connection to all this again this is supposedly Stephen Stern's best friend. Oh, okay, really? this is a guy that trafficked David Solomon. So David Solomon says that David Solomon says he is a victim of Stephen Stern, the guy who is a prime suspect for killing Madeline, the guy who was arrested for having the stepfather who had all the child porn. Gotcha. So this is another kid comes out and says he's a victim. This is a, a a guy that's saying he's a victim of Stephen Stern. So he drops this guy Brian Davis's name. So then you look in a James Artville, okay, and it's just a sketch, like the stuff that he's doing, and he's promoting Brian Davis, and they're in it together, and they're all part of the church together. Well, these guys come out and do a live interview. They, they, want, to, they want to clear their name. But when they come on the live, they basically confirm Solomon's whole story. So, so, so according, to the, according to James, the mom had cancer. His story's not straight because he keeps going back and forth. The mom is the mastermind of the whole plan, and and David's just harassing them. That's his story. But he can understand where David might think that he was trafficked because they did take him in a white van. They did take him and and from his mom. His mom had cancer, but they did it with the church, and they did it because they were doing it for good reasons, because they wanted to spare him from seeing his mom suffer from cancer. So they took this boy, and they went to— they went up to Seattle with him in a matter of days. And his excuse was that they were afraid of the father. And I'm like, what do you mean you're afraid of the father? Didn't you have permission from the father to take the kid? Why are you afraid of the father? So they run to Seattle. They, he says, I even, we tried to get new documents for him and everything. And when we tried to get new documents for him, we realized he was lying to us about his age. Well, you screwed up and you thought you had an underage child and you didn't because David wasn't 17 like they thought. He was actually 19. And it wasn't until they went to get the documentation that they found out that he wasn't the 17 year old that they thought. But they're like, oh, in their story. Wait, wait, let's slow it down for one second. Are you in touch with David Solomon? Oh, yeah, I'm in direct contact with him. (laughs) Now, what about now? I'm really hoping, okay, I'm at the edge of my seat. I'm really hoping that this is not going to turn out to be the same church where they dropped this kid off that morning, is it? Okay, so just keep listening, okay? okay? So just keep listening. All right, so the story, this I'm taking you along the path that I took. So you guys are going to come get the discoveries as I got them through my story, okay? So, and the discoveries that I got when I got them. So, so James is like, you know, he's basically, you know, he's told, and what's funny is when you listen to James's story, he says, yes, me and my wife, because he talks about how they, they left, they were staying at their house, locally to where they took David, and I forget exactly where it was. I want to say Oklahoma, Oregon. Okay, it was Oregon. And, um, and he, says, uh, he says, we were in Oregon for three days. Now, he says that in the first video. In the second video, he says he was in Oregon for a week. Okay, but in the, second, in the first video, he says we were there for three days, and then we decided to take our entire family and move to Seattle because David had convinced us that his father was going to get us. And, and we were so scared that I quit my job and we moved our whole family to Oregon and we decided to go or just to, I'm sorry, from Oregon to Seattle. And he said, so we decided to drive over there. We got in the car, we drive over. He said, we like, like four or five times. And he's like, we got in the car, we drove up there. We stayed at her sister-in-law's house. And then he was like, Oh wait, I wasn't there. I didn't go. I stayed home. And it was just funny. Cause it was like the same lie that Jen had gotten caught in. So it's like, this, are these guys going to the same, do they have the same lawyer? I think they have the same lawyer. So I'm not buying any of this guy's story. He's pretty much admitted to everything. 
So I'm like, okay, this is getting fishy. J- David Solomon's story might be true. Like his story might be true. So let's let's see who else he is talking about. So he talks about Aaron Eric Reinhold. So Eric Reinhold, okay, has um, he he's has a profile on Twitter that you can see only a year of existence for 2018. All you know is that he's a big Trump fan. That's all you know. He's a support Trump. That's all you can see. But he's a book writer and he's got an Amazon account and he's got reviews on Amazon account. And if you look at those reviews, some of the books that he loves. So this book that he read with all of his friends, him and his group of guys, friends read this book about lust and about forgiving yourself when you can't, um, not give in to your lust and temptations. And another book that he absolutely loved is a book called Heaven. Now, this book, Heaven, what makes this book so different, and this book, Heaven and Heaven for Kids, Heaven is a book where um, basically it's different from most spiritual books that talk about heaven, because usually when you hear about heaven, you hear about spirits up in heaven. Well, this guy doesn't think you have spirits up in heaven. He thinks you have your actual body, and it's kind of like Adam and Eve. Everyone's in heaven, and they're all naked, and they're all running around field, and basically, like, there's no sin in heaven. And you can do all the things you want to do on earth, but you can't because it's called sin. These are all the things you can do in heaven and get away with it because there's no sin and you can basically just do whatever you want. And you're all naked and you're all enjoying the lustful pleasures of, you know, the the world and it's okay. And that's his heaven. And there's a heaven and there's a heaven for kids, but they emphasize that you should read heaven first and then read heaven for kids with your children to explain to them what the book is about. So I was like, that's very interesting. And he said another review that he takes in immigrants from other countries. He talked about an immigrant that he took in from Egypt and he talked about how she was um not treated right in her country and she was being abused there and you know then he he took her into his house and this book helped him understand and i forget what the book was that he was talking about what what i caught from that was that he is working with uh other people from other countries and taking them in through the church so you know we have this big church connection and david solomon connection and he's saying okay these people are involved in the church then you've got and they're already creepy, and they're pretty much confirming David Solomon's story. So David Solomon is a victim. He's been trafficked. He's trying to get justice. He's on the run. So then you've got Santa and the the husband and Mora, who are also attached to the church. So then I do some snooping on the dad and the dad's family. Nobody's heard from the dad. Everybody's curious, you know, where's the dad at and all of this. So turns out that the dad and Jennifer got married. No, they never got married. Sorry. The dad is Tyler. Tyler married Tatiana two months after Jennifer had Madeline. So two months after Jennifer and Tyler had Madeline, Tyler's getting remarried to this girl, Tatiana. So it begged the question, like, what was the purpose of having the baby? Like, were you guys even together? When were you together? How do you get married to a man two months after he's having a baby with another woman. That's just a question a lot of people want to know. So I'm looking at this girl, like how is this girl able to take this man in two months and get her to marry him, get him to marry her? Why is she even marrying a man two months after he's having a baby with another woman? I don't know. You know, people usually take time between these things, but I notice in her profile that she has a cousin back in uh, 2022 that went missing, a runaway. And immediately I'm like, why are children running away from this family? It was known that Madeline Soto wanted to go run away and live in the woods. Um, That was something that they had found on her uh, on her phone. The cops had come out and report and said she wanted to run away and go live in the woods. And and then there's this other child in the family who now has run away. He's been gone for two weeks. Now, I can't find anything on social media. No, like interviews from the parents going, where's my baby? I miss my baby. I don't know where my baby is. No, nothing. There's nothing of this child at all. The only thing I see is a a Texas, and this is in Texas, there's a report of a missing child, and then two two weeks later he's found, and the only person who posted anything saying, hey, my kid is missing, was Tatiana, 
two weeks after he was missing. So that was a little suspicious in my, in, you know, my eyes. And I was like, that's a little fishy. What's going on here? So then we find out that the brother is actually a pastor for a church. And he comes out and he's got this video that I just posted this morning saying some very, um, just the way he's talking, like he's like men have to be masculine and women need to be, you know, submissive. And like the way he's describing it in his videos, it's very, uh, it's very kind of disturbing to me and the words that he's emphasizing um, make me feel like he's making videos that should not be um, sexual, sexual. So it was very concerning to me, just this whole vibe that he was giving off. And, and again, you know, everybody's kind of connected to the church here in this big old thing. So, you know, it's very, um, it's very disturbing to me what's going on. And so there's, I kind of lost where I was going, but there's another point to this whole thing. Do you have any questions? Well, no, you're doing good. <laughs> okay. But but <laughs> is that the same church, though, that where they dropped this kid off that morning? Oh, no. They're, no, this is not the same. No, this is not the same church where they dropped him off that morning. But according to Psalm, uh, David Solomon, he was a pastor at that church, Uh Stephen Stearns was a pastor at the Peace Church where he claims he dropped Madeline Soto off. Oh, really? So that's, yeah, so that's that. But no, we do, that was not the same church. No, absolutely not. Let me ask a couple of questions. Um, now, the, the home where Madeline and her mother lived, how, how many bedrooms did that home have? One bedroom? No, that's four bedrooms. People got confused by a, a news article that yeah. came out saying that it was a one bedroom. It's definitely a four bedroom. Okay. And oh, and that was another thing I wanted to bring up. This morning I found out, oh my gosh, because they came out and said the the party was not at, the news people came out and did like a whole thing and said that the party was not at Jennifer Soda's house, the birthday party. Then somebody in the face group book came out and said that their daughter was at the party and um, they, the party was at grandma's house. Okay, I just found grandma's house and looked that up this morning. That was a lie. So that's another person online that's lying for whatever happened. So whatever's going on, there's several people that are lying to try and cover for whatever happened. And when you look at the photo of this girl, it's devastating. I mean, you can see her. She looks like she has black eyes. Um, she looks like she's drugged. It's very, very concerning. There's a photograph of her. It's the only photograph of her at the birthday party, which is really weird itself. She looks like she's up on display, okay? You can see in the reflection of the balloon, because there's balloons and there's a, um, a, a, a door, a glass door that opens up to a pool in the back. And the glass door has reflection in it. In the reflection, you see uh, four men. And in the reflection of the balloon, you see several men. You do not see any kids, any women, or anything in, to indicate that there's any children or women at this party and it's very concerning and it, it makes you wonder like what you know the police are saying the last thing that happened or whatever the last time anybody saw her was at this birthday party the next thing they see is the next morning they see Stefan Stearns returning to the Soto house with Madeline's body in the car he was seen dropping off her 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 he threw away her laptop in her backpack, her school book backpack, in the trash, I guess, outside of, you know, the school or... No, no, it's, it's, it was at the apartment where they I'm not sure. It was, okay. Right. And now let me so ask you a quick question. he was seen tossing that at 7.15, then he was seen going back to Soto's house at, like, 8.10 with her in the, with her in the car, and she was not alive. Okay, then was she alive when he went to take her to school that day, and then, then she died uh, during that trip? The last time that she was seen alive was at that party. At that party. is the last proof of life that anybody has. And she looked like she was on drugs. She looked like she was beaten. She, even in her picture where she's like, they're trying to take a good picture of her. She doesn't look good. And um, she looks she looks like she, she looks like she's got black eyes. It's sad. She looks pale. It's very concerning. And it's the only picture of the party. There's no other kids around. You know, so yeah. something happened at that party. And even detectives are coming out. You're seeing all these body language detectives and you know experts coming out saying that something happened at the party according to the body language of jennifer soto and stephan stearns something happened at the birthday party oh, and, then, and, and all this is on the, the facebook it all down to this is on the facebook this is, all this is 
Madeline Soto yeah, page Facebook on Facebook? Group. Yeah, yeah, I get a lot of the information on the Madeline Soto Facebook discussion group. Okay, so now if something happens at the party, then then or she dies at home that day, and and he, he takes her out to the uh, the church area, then back, and he dumps off her stuff in a body still in the car. That doesn't sound like this is something that's been premeditated, right? This seems like something that, that was um, spontaneous, right? I, I don't think it was premeditated. I'm, um, you know, I have my suspicions and my theories. I think we all do, uh, but without the evidence, and, you know, we just pray that the police are doing a good job on this. But, you know, then you have the whole thing about the police. They leaked her photo on their Facebook right. page, her dead body. You have the other police officer that took a photo, a selfie photo with Stephen Stearns as he's coming out of the police department. Then you have a lawyer that came on and said that if they were defending Stephen Stearns, they would basically go after the fact that the police did not get a search warrant to search his phone. And that basically, if the whole thing rides on the phone, they can get the whole case thrown out, which most of the case does rest on the evidence on that phone. And then get the whole thing thrown out because this police department did not get a search warrant for his phone. So it's starting to look like a big cover up and people are like, oh, it's ridiculous to say that the police are involved in this and that. But then when you look at the fact that the the brother in law, I'm sorry, not the brother in law, the, the brother of the guy who killed himself and the son of Dirty Santa, who was taking pictures at what we believe is the local church, he definitely had, was accessing children at the church. We know that for a fact. And um, he had kids you know, strange kids playing at his house and swimming in his pool, kids that weren't even his. He didn't, you know, like neighborhood kids and, that and he come was over a, to his house and play, you know, who lets your kids play with the neighborhood Santa? And he was a corrections officer. Know him through the church or have created, you no, know, his son is a corrections officer, but he's not a corrections officer. He's the warden right. of the whole corrections department. We're not talking about just an officer. We're talking about the warden. Right. We're not talking about just a teacher at the school. We're talking about the principal. You're talking about the people who run the whole show. And these preachers of all these churches, they're all connected. They go to little, just like you, any profession you're in. If you're in radio, you know all the other radio DJs, even if they don't work for your company. If you're in hair, you know all the other hairstylists that work for the other salons locally. Tattooers know all the other tattoo artists locally. You know, doesn't, machinists know all the other machinists locally. It doesn't matter. Birds of a feather flock together. Well, even, even more with, all with churches, yeah. are connected through the church. Then you look at the the, the, the Timmy Chonga thing, right? So Tim, Timmy Chogi or whatever this Stephen Stearns was obsessed with, this t- childhood toy. Yeah. So would you know that the Timmy Chonga has a new thing coming out? It's so great. It's a dinosaur Timmy Chonga. No, I'm sorry, dragon. Dragon. Mm. No, dragon. That's the thing. It's dragon because Brian... Right, our other writer guy, what's he obsessed with? Dragons. He wrote this book about dragons. This whole book series is all about dragons. The Brian guy, the the head of this whole thing, according to David um, Solomon. And again, these people are the people that write the books that children yeah. read. They're the people that make the toys that children play with. Okay, so yeah. Well, let, let me ask you a couple all... questions. Let me ask you a couple questions. Stephen Stern. They had a childhood friend of his. I saw an interview with him, and he was talking about how Stephen Stern thought he could uh, preserve his uh, semen he would ejaculate into a little jars and he oh my god yeah that oh so gross isn't right. it right and, and he thought he could take those little jars and he had a bunch of them and give it to women's food and they would get pregnant by ingesting this <laughs> and not, that no, is so gross yeah, no, and you know what i caught from the friends interview yeah. there's a couple of things that i caught because those were very intuitive to me because there was a couple of things that the friend said, and the one thing that gave it away was the shared folder. I kept coming back to the shared folder. The one friend said Stefan had a shared folder on his computer, and he was sharing it with the other friend. Da, 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 da. And I was like, right there. He's making it, he's creating it, and he's sharing it. What was his this employment at Disney? not just somebody doing it for personal gratification. This is a business. These are people that are turning it into a business. Then you have the whole Cox guy who's right down the street who's, again, making and creating it. This is a business. you got two business people in the same town, in the same area, creating the same thing, getting arrested on the same week. 
they're connected, okay? So I don't care what anybody says. I believe these two guys are connected. They're connected to the church. There's obvious connections all the way around. And then you have the whole um, friends coming out, and they got a shared folder, and all the friends, they all have in common that they all smoke pot, and they were all the bad kids. Right. And if you look at all their videos, that's the only thing that they say that they have in common was that they were all the bad kids, and they all smoked pot, and they all did bad things, and they were proud of it. And when you listen to the one friend, he calls Stefan stupid. But the only reason why he's stupid, it's not for hurting the girl. It's not for the pictures he took. It's not for the abuse he did. He's stupid for throwing her bag in the trash can right around the corner and getting caught. And that tells me everything I know with the shared folder. And the mom's covering, too, because Stefan Stern's was paid the friend was paid off by mom so mom knows grandma knows everybody knows grandma knows because she's suspicious as anything and she said the friend came out to the party was at grandma's house and i did evidence this morning found grandma's house and looked at the pictures and i promise you that party was not at grandma's house unless she painted her house got a new roof and planted a tree and the neighbor put in a fence all in the last couple of weeks since google updated their services okay, okay. it is not the same house we're talking to shauna from the salty lunatics you can find her on tiktok youtube and instagram and she has a website called uh be salty lunatics yes okay yes now there's some other stuff here too you hear these stories that the that steven and the mother were broken up but he was still staying over there and they weren't sleeping on the same bed. But that also, too, that Madeline was afraid to sleep in her, alone in a bed. Do we know what the sleeping arrangements were in that home? It's scary to me to think because there was rumored that the mom worked nights. So the mom couldn't go to the birthday party. So the mom wasn't there. and She couldn't go because she worked nights was what was rumored. And then the grandma says that Stefan Stern's lives in the house, or no, they all says that they live in the house, but the grandma says that Madeline can't sleep alone, right? She said that in her interview. Madeline can't sleep alone. Well, if Jennifer works nights mm. and Stefan Stearns lives in the house, who sleeps with her? Who does the grandma think sleeps with her if she knows her daughter works nights? So what does the grandma know? It's like the grandma knows, and she's, like, basically telling us, like, what's going on, like, low-key. Um, I, I just, yeah, it's all highly suspicious. I, I think they all knew. I think they all were abusing her. I think it's a big, huge uh, trafficking ring connected to the church. I think they're trafficking kids to the border. You got David Solomon, who is, uh, who says he alleges that he was trafficked to uh, Canada. Then you've got this family who's got, you know, half of the family's in Texas. Uh, that's convenient, right? Right there in Texas. What's going on in Texas? You know, they're all connected to the church. They're, they're, it's like this polygamy cult, you know, trafficking, and they're all connected. Uh, it's just it, the hole just gets bigger and bigger, and deeper and deeper. And it's a lot of videos, but if you can watch them all, you'll you'll connect all the dots and see it very clearly. Now, Stephen Stern, what was his employment at Disney? What was his employment in general? First of all, he he worked at. Oh, this is scary too. So he worked at Disney, and uh, he was he was the getting the people, the kids on the ride for the imagination. I believe it was Epcot, mm -hmm. actually. He was helping the kids get on the ride, the imagination of the figment imagination ride. And so he not only worked at the entrance helping the kids on, but he, you know, went into the ride and helped, you know, the kids out in the ride and stuff like that. Um, and then... That's not a very high-paying job. Thing, uh, do we know of any other source of income this guy has? Oh, no, it was actually said, like, even the friends were like, we don't know how he's making money. Yeah. Uh, he has always has money, and, you know, I thought maybe the mom was giving him money. But one of his charges said, uh, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on radio, but it was bestiality mm. with a child under uh, five is what, uh, it was one of the listed potential things that he was being charged with. And it just, you know, and it just got me worried about the dogs. You know, his mother had a poodle grooming service oh and the wife at one time had a dog sitting service where she was, uh, you know, her and Stefan, of course they lied and they had, oh, and here was what was really fishy. So Stefan serves after he was caught, after he was caught. So on the Rover website where she was a pet sitter, there was a, a review from Stefan and it said, Jen is such a great dog sitter. She watched my dog, uh, Coda. And, uh, or S Sailor, I think it was Sailor, actually. And, um, because he had two dogs, Sailor and Coda. And he goes, she, she watched, she watched my dog and it was so great. And then later, after Stefan Sturz was arrested, Jennifer changed her social media profile. So she changed her name on social media from Jen to Stefan Stern's dog's name. 
bro. If you're after if he you're got arrested, man, after he got arrested, if your man is arrested for molesting your child, are you going to change your social media profile to his dog? No, uh, uh, I mean, Shauna, Shauna, wait, wait, Shauna, are we a hundred percent sure that these are his dogs and that the dogs' names aren't made up or perhaps he her dogs? He claimed it was his dog in the review right. on the thing. Now it could have been made up, but here's the thing: if you watch the interview with Jennifer Soto, there's a point where she stops in the interview and it looks like she's smiling and she's waiting for there's something in the background going off. It's a it's a dog feeder. A lot of people question, is it a parrot? Is it this? Is it that? Mm. It's a dog feeder. And if you listen very carefully, it's Stephen Stearns and Madeline Soto together going, Taylor, Coda. Oh, really? One of the voices is very deep and one of the voices is very high. So it's, it's both of them together. They're, they're, it's a recorded thing. It's a, so it was all figured out that uh, through, through the internet sleuths because I have a lot of internet sleuths that are working with me and i got to get give well, credit still, to them because Stana, there's so many. Shana, that could be her dogs then. If, if they're both in the same house and the dogs are at her house, that, that could be her dogs. It could be her yeah. dog. I'm only going by his, by his admission okay. on her page. So by what he claims, it was his dog. Gotcha. And to me, that's just sus. That's just sus. I don't know whose dog it was. I only have their testimony to go by. So by what they're okay, claiming. Okay, let's, let's not get too caught up in the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, know, I, I hear you. I hear you. But now. I only have the evidence to go by. The mother's. So what I've got. I know. But the mother's income. She's not supporting her lifestyle at this, this condo gated community here on a dog sitter's salary, right? Uh, what, what, None yeah. of them are. You look at Santa's house. Santa's living bulky, man. He's living. Tell me Santa makes that much money that he's living in this house over on country countryside view lane man because those houses are those are half, those are over half a million dollar homes <laughs> these people are banking they're this disney pleasure island people you ever watch pinocchio oh my gosh the whole movie's about trafficking kids they're the disney writers this is what these people do they write movies for the for the for the children and they write all about it because they can't they have to tell you what they're doing they can't just do it they got to tell you you guys throw it in your face. They think they're getting away with it right under your nose. What, what? Pinocchio is all about human trafficking to Pleasure Island and trafficking oh. children. That's what Disney does. That's why they had that whole Pleasure Island theme park that they opened up at Disney. Wait, so now is that when you were saying That's off the air, that, do. when you were telling me off the air that there was a, a connection to Little St. James Island, the Jeffrey Epstein Island, it, it, what connection is that? It's just the, the, the Disney and, and and the whole. It's all enough for me. That's enough. That's enough for me. I think it goes bigger. I think we will find. I don't have any proof that it goes to Epstein Island. Okay. Right now. I just think it does. That's just me. My suspicions. When I told you that, that's just me and my suspicions and what I think. Well, you want to know but what? what hey, we've listen. Got so far, but this is definitely huge. We've got leaders of churches. We've got leaders of of police departments. You know, the corrections office. You've got leaders of churches that travel around the country. Right. You've got events taking place in Texas and Washington state next to Canada and in Florida, you know, all in areas that are next to waterways that can easily, you know, this is how what they do. This is how they do it. This is how human trafficking works. And if you are not aware of how human trafficking works, I encourage you, you know, to to, to get raise awareness for yourself, you know, keep Keep aware, keep yourself aware on how it works, and then keep raising awareness so other people know, um, because raising awareness for human trafficking is really important. You know, while you you got all these sleuths out there <laughs> at your disposal, um, you may not be aware of this, but, but you know, there was a, uh, a child pornography manufacturer who lived on Brillo Way, the same road that Epstein lived on in West Palm Beach. Um, I lived in an apartment in that area, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. I found the address before, and he killed himself too uh, during a raid. <laughs> okay, this wasn't, wow. this wasn't that long ago either. Okay, that's a that's a whole nother thing wow. going on. There. Yeah, oh boy, and and you got all these characters here. Now, so but the mother's employment besides dog sitter, what what did she claim to be her employment to afford all this? Oh, she worked at Disney. No, we found all of that out. She was a virtual assistant for Disney. She worked she worked from home as a virtual assistant, according to the records. So what we have actual evidence on from online, you know, friends are claiming other things. You know, they say she worked worked at Disney, that she worked at the Swan. Um, you know, there's a lot of people saying different things. But what we have from the Internet, from, you know, her records, it says that she worked as a virtual assistant and planner, a vacation planner for Disney. So that would indicate to me that she works from home. 
Now, I know you had some suspicions, some suspicions too, as well, of people were claiming that they had seen uh, Madeline that morning after she was dead. There were sightings. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Which made me wonder. Like, again, these are all things that make me think, like, there's more people right. that are, because that are, it's really fishy, because the police came out and said that they had seen Madeline Soto's, uh, you know, they'd seen her on camera at the church the morning of. So this is allegations that the parents said, you know, they said, even the police, I think there was an interview or something where he said, yeah, we saw, but we didn't know it was her. We could not, con he was very adamant, like we could not confirm it was her. Whereas the parents were like, oh no, it was her. And it was very weird that the parents were like, so adamant to say it was her when the police were like, no, we're not sure. It was almost like the parents were trying to like cover, like, oh yeah, that's definitely her. It was her. We saw her, you know, and she's alive and she's okay. And we didn't do it. That was kind of the impression that I was getting from them. Yeah, she's, and, she's uh, off living in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> so on Facebook, there was several people that were commenting throughout the day that were like, you know, because everyone was looking for her. And when Madeline went missing, we were on the Facebook page and we were all searching together and we were all helping each other look. And people would be posting and they were like, oh, my gosh, we just seen a girl with a green sweater and jeans coming out of the woods. And then another one said she had. Yes, I saw her. She had a couple of grocery bags. Mm. She was on this road. And another one was like, yeah, w another one was like, we seen her. She was waving people down. She was, you know, she was over on this road. And they were like, and then other people were like, well, maybe she's going to Gatorland. And another one was like, maybe she's going to see her, her dad over in Texas. Because that was like the direction that she was going. Um, and, and several people had commented that they had seen this. So it's very weird that there are people coming out online that are kind of lying and saying things. That, I'm not saying that they're lying, but what? But who is lying, I know for a fact, is the friend that said, my daughter was at the party and it was at grandma's house. Because we know for a fact that it was not at grandma's house. So now I want to know who that friend is and why they said the party was at grandma's when we can clearly see the party was not at grandma's. So I'm wondering, I'm feeling like there's a lot of people lying. If you look at like, so if you go on social media on TikTok, there's, you know, there's family members that are coming out that are talking and none of them show any emotion. None of them are crying. None of them are sad. They're all just very like nonchalant and they're all defending you know, everything that happened and, you know, th this family has been through so much, just don't, you know, and it's just, it's just weird. The whole situation yeah, no, is yeah, weird. I would think people would be grieving over the loss of their children and crying. I wouldn't be able to stop crying. I think I would be curled up in a ball in my bed for days, unable to function if something happened to my babies. I just don't know what I would do, you know? Now, it, the mother has not been arrested. Correct. And her story is, yeah, I saw my daughter alive that morning. I saw her leave with uh, Stephen uh, Stern. Um, I saw them leave the house alive. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Is, now, is that possible? Oh, man, say that again. I'm sorry. Her, 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 she's saying that she saw her daughter was alive that morning, got dressed and ready for school, and she saw her. Oh, yeah, there's no way she saw her daughter. Yeah. She said that, yeah, but that's not possible. Because the cops say she was already dead, or presumably because they seem her, you know, hunched over in a car. So they're assume I guess they're assuming she's dead. I don't know the the facts on that because I've heard different reporters say different things, you know. But the cops they do believe that she was dead at that time. So that's what they believe, which would indicate that you know Jen did not see her at eight o'clock. Everyone knows the mom is lying. The, the, everybody's lying in this whole case. It, it, you can't trust anything that they say. You have to go by the facts of what. You know, you can prove at this point because the mom's story just isn't aligning at all, at all. I mean, she's got so many inconsistencies. Well, what about the mother now? Does she have an attorney? Is she still cooperating with police? No, I heard she is not cooperating with police, and I heard she does have an attorney. Some people were saying she was in an uh, institution, that she had been institutionalized. I don't believe that. Some people were saying she was on TikTok trolling and, and looking and commenting on the videos that people were making about her. I, I'd probably be more inclined to believe the latter than the former. Some people had seen her walking around the neighborhood. Uh, some people local to her neighborhood said they had seen her walking around and she was just walking around like nothing happened. Um, you know, so just doing her, getting her daily walk in is what it appeared to them to look like, you know, like she was just out for a, for an exercise stroll. Uh, there was uh, there was a picture of her car that came out. So there was a picture of her car that was seen with police tape on it. Okay, that indicated that the pol that the police had actually taken the car under investigation, 
and it was there was two pieces of red tape and one piece of green tape that were uh, basically uh, covering the door so that you couldn't open it. And if you open the door, you break the tape. Then the cops know that you know you're your heart. You know. Let me ask uh, you a quick question. Interfering only, with the investigation. Yeah, we only have a couple of minutes, and I, and you were saying that uh, you, you think there might be a flaw in the prosecution because of a lack of a search warrant for the uh, Mr. Stern's phone. But what about Madeline Soda's phone? Um, were they able to recover? Did she have a phone? Would they recover that phone? Maybe some of this material was discovered. According her- to Jen's, uh, you know, according to Jen's report, she's, you know, they, they, the police have the phone. So she was like, because she said in her interview, she was like, well, I have the phone. And she was like, well, the police have her phone. So. And, and does the mother say they were broken up or not? I'm going to say that the mother says with her body language, the way that she was groping him in that first interview, that they are not broken up. Uh, word wise, you know, I, she hasn't come out and been like, yes, we were together or no, we were broken up. But her body language rubbing him and groping him the way she was that first day, knowing what we know now, that told me all I needed to know. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, we're, t- we're talking to the Salty Lunatic. <laughs> okay, the Salty Lunatics is the TikTok, the YouTube, and the Instagram. Uh, you can find out uh, www.thesaltylunatics. Sean has all kind of stuff, uh, tattoos. and You want to list off all your businesses and things you do, Shona? Oh, uh, landscaping. We have four diode lasers. We have a laser business that we do uh, wood burn portraits, really cool 3D wood burn engravings and leather uh, cuts and other really cool uh, wood art projects that you should definitely check out. And, and how many kids of your own do you have? Um, I have all the kids in Central Florida right now. Those that, That's what I have. All all of the kids <laughs> in Central Florida under my belt, I, and I'm going to protect them all. You're definitely very busy. And, and how many TikToks and Reels do you do in a day? A lot. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. And I, I tell I, I, people, I encourage you to go check this out, The Salty Lunatics on TikTok. Uh, there's always good content. Sometimes it's just speculation, but there's always good content. That's how I heard about the story to begin with. So Shauna from The uh, the Salty Lunatics at TikTok and SaltyLunatics.com. Shauna, thank you so much, man. Anything new comes up, man, give me a call. We'll put you right back on the air. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. listeners, and thank you all my internet sleuths for helping. Thank you.